This is Coach PDHPE with a HSC Core 2 video, Factors Affecting Performance. The key idea is how does training affect performance? And the syllabus point we're looking at is types of training and training methods. The first two dash points, aerobic training and anaerobic training, were covered in two previous videos. But for this video, we're having a look at the two dash points, flexibility training and also strength training. There's the right hand side student learn to from the syllabus and um, I'll be talking about those as I make my way through the video. So if you were looking for those other two uh, topics on anaerobic and aerobic training you can find them at the website and that link should be appearing on the screen as I speak. So let's get into flexibility training. Now flexibility training is the range of motion around a joint. It is actually possible to be flexible in one area of the body but not in another. So for example it is possible for a person to be uh, very flexible in the shoulders but not to be flexible in the hamstrings. Now individuals are able to improve their flexibility with specific flexibility training although it's an element that's over, often sorry, overlooked by athletes in their training programs seeing believing that it's not very important. Now flexibility training will achieve many things for the athlete but specifically some of these areas are it will reduce stress in the muscles after exercise enabling the muscles to recover for the next for the next athletic performance. It reduces the risk of injury. It also improves the range of motion which in turn can improve performance. For example, a golfer could generate more power in the golf swing if the hips and shoulders are more flexible. Time spent stretching can aid in relaxing the athlete also after performance. Now the syllabus lists four different types of stretching and each of them have their pros and cons. And I'm going to have a look at each one of those individually now. The first of these is static stretching. Static stretching is different from other forms of stretching because it is done when the body is at rest and is not moving. For example, as you can see in this video, there is no bouncing in static stretching. The athlete will hold the stretch without moving for a period of 10 to 20 seconds. Static stretches are important during the cool down as they help muscles to relax and re-establish their normal range of motion. The next type of stretching I'm going to look at is called PNF stretching or by its full name proprioceptive muscular facilitation. I think it's easier to stick with PNF stretching. Now the first thing with um, PNF stretching it's best to do with a partner as you can see in this video example here. Now the partner uh, pushes the, the, the leg in this example to a point of mild discomfort uh, for the person who's being stretched and then they hold in that position for a time period of about 10 to 20 seconds. The muscle then gets relaxed slowly back to its um, normal range of motion and then the step, the process is then repeated. Um, it will then be again stretched to a point of mild discomfort again by the partner and then held again for 10 to 20 seconds. Now this process can be repeated for two to three times. So just as a quick recap, it's a combination of isometric contractions. Now isometric is where the partner is holding the stretch in that fixed point where there's no change in the length of muscle, followed by relaxed stretch, stretching of the muscle. It's best to do PNF stretching after a workout or the game as the, the force that the person pushes against can lead to some loss of strength in the muscle and you don't want that to happen before um, athletic performance. The next type of stretching is ballistic stretching. Now ballistic stretching is using the momentum of a moving body in a bouncing type fashion in an attempt to move the limb beyond its normal range of motion by bouncing in and out of a stretch position. It's considered a controversial type of stretching because of the potential risk of injury due to the bouncy type movements as you can see in this example. The final type of stretching I'm talking about is dynamic stretching. Dynamic stretching uses movements that are specific to the sport or activity about to be performed and for this reason it is ideal for the warm-up. Dynamic stretching differs from ballistic stretching in that dynamic stretching actively stretches the muscles within their normal range of motion and therefore safe range of motion. Rather than standing in one place and forcing the muscles to stretch as is the case with static stretching 
Dynamic stretching trains the muscles to warm up and fire the way you want them to through a series of dynamic movements as seen in this video, which would be ideal for team sports, particularly football. So that's stretching finished with. The next dash point is strength training. Now the definition of resistance or strength training is the ability to exert force against a resistance. For example, as the individual pushes the barbell up during the up phase of the bench press, they are exerting a force against a resistance, which is the weight. The strength needed to tackle Sam Burgess is different type of strength needed for the AFL player who has to jump off the ground to take a mark, and a different again to the strength needed to throw a javelin 70 metres plus, and completely different again for the strength needed for the 70 year old person who has to go about their daily activities. That means there is different types of strength needed for different sports, and also different activities and different training methods and equipment needed to meet those needs. Those types of equipment are the syllabus examples for this dash point of strength training. Now before going into the different uh, types of equipment used in strength training, I think it's important to talk about some of the key terms in strength training. And the first of these is repetitions. Now repetitions is the number of times an exercise is repeated without a break. In this example here, uh, the lady performing the exercise does three repetitions before she takes a break. The next key term is rest. Now this is the time necessary for the muscles to recover after a series of repetitions is done. So in that previous example, when the lady did three repetitions, she would need a rest period um, depending on how heavy the weight was before she went into her next, uh, her next set. The next key term is muscle hypertrophy. Now muscle hypertrophy refers to the increase in the size of the muscle as a result of resistance training or strength training. Now we're going to talk about some of the different types of contractions now. Isometric contraction is when there is tension in the muscle but there is no change in the actual muscle length. An example of this would be doing the plank hold where you're just keeping a steady body position and this is known as an isometric contraction. The next type of contraction is called a concentric contraction and this is when the muscle shortens during contraction as is the case in the up phase of the bicep curl. An eccentric contraction is when the muscle lengthens during a contraction as is the case in the down phase of the bicep curl as demonstrated in this video. Okay, we'll now move on to the different types of equipment that the syllabus suggests that you know about. The first of these is weight machines or sometimes referred to as stack weights. Now, Weight machines make it easier for the, use, for the user to have better technique as the individual doesn't have to control movement of the weight as it's on a pulley system or on rollers. As you can see um, on this example here of the lat pull down, it's on a pulley system where the weight, uh, individual chooses they weight, the weight that they want to use by inserting a pin at the correct position. Or you have this type of machine which is known as a stack type weights which works on a roller type system. It just eliminates the uh, risk of injury a little bit. Um, it's easy to use for individuals new to strength training because it promotes good technique. Um, some of the benefits is it's extremely easy to use, it has a lower risk of injury um, and also can be used alone. Disadvantages, um, there's less variety in the choice of exercise at say free weight supply. Um, there's less involvement of the stabiliser muscles, so the muscles found particularly in the core and they're very expensive. Next type of equipment is a very common one most people would be familiar with is what's known as free and fixed weights. Now there's mainly two types, there's dumbbells which is shown in the picture there and also barbells, um, pretty much similar. The way they use it's prefer, um, you just the individual selects the weight that they want to use and then generally either standing or on a bench um, they perform the exercise and there's a whole variety of different exercises um, the individual can use using uh, free weights. It's mainly preferred by elite sports people and coaches because of the variety of exercise um, the individual can do. Advantages, um, as I just said, it offers more variety and it works to stabilise core muscles as well. 
Some of the disadvantages of free and fixed weights is they require more coordination and greater technique to use, which particularly makes it difficult for first-time weight users. Um, it, promotes a, uh, it provides a greater risk of injury, and for safety reasons, more often than not, you shouldn't use these weights alone, that you should have a partner or sometimes referred to as a spotter while they're performing the actual exercise. Moving on to resistance bands. Um, resistance bands are used for general strength and conditioning and not really to gain muscle hypertrophy. They're also mainly used a, a lot in rehabilitation work by physios. Now, the way resistance bands work, um, sorry, I'll just go back. The, there are different color resistance bands um, that provide different tension. So depending on the color, you can get some that make um, quite uh, difficult to actually stretch out, and they're used um, for people who are looking for greater tension in the actual exercise. Now there's most resistance at the end of the movement. Um, so to gain, I guess, any sort, sort of muscle hypertrophy, um, you have to be able um, to move that limb a, a fair distance Distance, which sometimes uh, requires also very good flexibility. The advantages of resist resistance bands is they are ideal for home use and they're inexpensive and they're very good as I mentioned before for injury rehabilitation. Some of the disadvantages of resistance bands, they don't give muscle hypertrophy. Um, they're really mainly used for general conditioning of the muscle. The last example is hydraulic weight machines. Um, hydraulic weight machines are very expensive and they're generally found in um, uh, high, uh, upper class type gymnasiums. Um, they don't have added weights added to the actual machine. As you can see in this picture, they work on hydraulic cylinders that provide resistance. So the harder uh, the individual, um, the harder and faster the individual pushes, the greater resistance that's provided by the hydraulic cylinders. The advantages is it gives both concentric and eccentric contractions, and it's ideal for low resistance, high repetition type exercises, and that's why they're ideal and you see them in many circuit type classes. The disadvantages of hydraulic hydraulic machines. They don't suit home use because of the actual price of them and the space that would be required to have um, a range of different exercise. They're not ideal for those individuals wanting high resistance, for example, uh, uh, greater muscle hypertrophy. So that's the end of this particular dash point on flexibility and strength training. Hope you found it useful. Uh, it's the same tip always, has always I give. If you need more information, see your textbook or ask your teacher.